All right, now push. Almost there. Push. Push. One more. Push. Hey, everyone. Today on The Quilt Show, we're birthing the 2024 Block of the Month right here. Oh, look at her. Isn't she precious? Coochie, coochie, coochie. And now, your hosts for The Quilt Show, Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms. Welcome to The Quilt Show, everyone. It is 2024, and you know what that means. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, and it's time for the TQS BOM. Oh. And we are so excited because our designer for this year's BOM is Jen Kingwell, all the way from Australia. Yay. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Jen, oh, to I, have you in Colorado? Are you kidding me? I know, I know, because you're from down under. I right? am. I certainly am. And uh, when you said yes to do our BOM, we were so excited we couldn't stand it because your quilts really do have a unique, fresh look. I mean, how would you describe it, your quilts? Um, well, certainly scrappy. Okay. I, I'm, I'm scrappy to the core. I love scrap quilts, and I'm certainly not um, constrained by any type of fabric. I will use every single genre of fabric there is out there. So whether it's Civil War, um, novelty or conversation prints, you name it, I will pop but it in there. But all cotton. Now, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, all, we all go through that, that time period. Let's take a look at the BOM right away so right. everybody can see what's going on. Tell us about it. The name of this is? Pick a Petal. And um, I was inspired to make this quilt by the Paddock, I know you probably don't say paddock, okay. meadow, just, yeah, meadow, meadow next yeah. door um, to where I live. And at certain times of the year, there are, you know, flowers and wild flowers that pop up in that, um, in that field. So that so was sort looking of, out your studio. It is, at oh, my studio my window. Word. Yes. Okay, but I want to I say something. Um, there's piecing in it. There's yes. applique. There's also hand embroidery. Oh, because that's what you're in love with. Uh huh. For sure. This is so fresh and so wonderful. I think people will really enjoy doing this a lot. I hope so. You are a hand worker, not so much a machine worker. That's exactly right. Tell us yes, about that. Yes, I love handwork. It actually quietens my my mind. Um, I just I feel at peace when I pick up that needle and thread. I don't feel quite so at peace when I sit at my sewing machine, but that's just Okay, share me. what you shared with me before the show. This is funnier than anything, people. Um, I think Moda asked a question on their Instagram about what notion or what do they have sitting right beside their sewing machine, and I said a bottle of anxiety pills. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I love that quilt, and I do want to say, everybody, that um, you don't have to be a hand piecer, hand applicator. Certainly, this translates beautifully to your sewing machine if that's where you get your zen. Yes, okay. I agree. That's wonderful. All right, so let's look at the next quilt, okay? Tell us about this one. So this quilt is called um, Green Tea and Sweet Beans. And I've named it that, which is of course very Japanese because I was making a lot of these blocks. We were in Japan visiting. We had a um, Japanese exchange student okay. with us for 12 months. So we were over visiting her when I was making a lot of these blocks. So um, I, I like the, the green tea and I love their sweet bean desserts. So that's where the name came. But this quilt was the quilt that really started the whole journey for me because Sue Spargo saw this hanging in my oh. store and Sue really encouraged me to write patterns because at that stage I was just literally handwritten photocopying them in store and just giving them to people when they were buying fabric. So this was the first sort of commercial pattern that I did and Sue really, really, really encouraged There's me along that. I might have missed yes. it, but what, what year would this have been? Oh gosh, I think maybe around 2005, I think it was. When... Boy, well what a skyrocket journey yeah. you've had since then. Yes. And you know, we have a really special treat for you. You're not expecting this, but we have a little message from Sue Spargo oh. for you. Take a look at this. Congratulations, Jen, on another beautiful design that I know the quilt show viewers are going to love. When I encouraged you many years ago to take your unique designs out into the wider world, wow, well look at you now. I'm so proud of you. Um, I'm so happy you believed in yourself and shared your passion and creativity. 
I'm glad more people get to see just how special you are. And that you, like me, have a man passion for hand stitching. Well done, my friend. Well done, my friend. <laughs> she is such a treasure. She is a treasure. She is a treasure. Yeah. And I say this jokingly, I stalk her. But not in a, <laughs> not in a creepy way. But right. she, she's it. She is. Yeah. She, she's, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. As we say in Australia, she's the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Sue. All right, the next quilt. Um, this is steampunk. I love it. Uh, um, this is a traditional airship propeller block, really, but it's just um, my love of scrap in there. You can make that block with four fabrics, that, you okay. know, or you can make it with um, 15 or whatever that I put in there. Did you design that block? No, that's a traditional block. Is it? That's I've a never very seen it traditional before. block. Yes. Now, mm. you got a really fabulous award in 2023. I did. It was a total shock and surprise, but um, I received the Raja Award, which in Australia is, it's a peer um, nominated award, which I think that's so special, but for excellence in contribution to the quilting industry. So Well, and also I just want to let most of us that watch like in the United States, because mm -hmm. that is our biggest audience, Base, yeah. you guys need to know that is pinnacle in Australia. It, it is. is a huge award and we're so happy and proud for you yeah, for thank that. You. So what did you what did you what did you do when you heard it? I I couldn't believe it because it was announced at the award night, but I had no idea that I was receiving it. So it had been kept very quiet. My family knew because they had to get me to the dinner. And oh. I, it, I went reluctantly because I'd just flown in from Italy the day before, so I was incredibly tired. But, um, and then when they started to read it out, I was thinking, oh, isn't that funny, you know? That, that's exactly the same path that I took. I know, then, I know. You know? Yeah. Oh, and, and then somebody has the same name I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. like now, listen, we learned that as a child, you started sewing. And, yes. and then it just kind of grew along the way with you. But while it was growing along the way with you, you were a midwife. I was, yes. So that was the absolute dream job. And I loved every minute of it. And the only reason that I really gave it up was I injured my knee playing basketball numerous times and I'd had lots of surgery and I just felt that I perhaps couldn't respond as quickly as I needed to mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I stopped working and that's when I started Your in the first quilt. This is the first quilt. So this so, was after the midwife? Uh, no, this was when I started my general nursing training. Oh, okay. So the first night that I lived in the nurse's accommodation home, I went to the sitting room and people were sitting around sewing English piece um, Paper piece. Paper piece yeah. hexagons. It's still got the papers. It's papers, but you have not taken the papers out because you said there's a lot of history that was written in there. Yeah, there. because I, I, I wrote them on the running sheet from the daily ward doctor's rounds. Oh, so there's wow. a little bit of nursing history in there and there is also newspaper print in some of them. So yeah, I, I will never remove the papers. I love that. <clears throat> okay, the next quilt. Tell us about that, please. Oh, I so love these. <laughs> this one's called Daisy Do, and um, this was the quilt that was featured on the cover of my first book, Quilt Lovely. It's a very special quilt to me. It's called Daisy Do. My mother would swing my children on the swing in the family um, yard um, for hours, and she would sing this little song. So I, when I made that quilt, I thought, oh, okay. what is the song? You know, Daisy do oh, like. Tell me. Oh, I, I can't see. We'll you can sing. Um, Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer. Do oh, I'm yeah, not yeah, crazy? Yeah. I'm not crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, Fabulous. Yeah. Okay, and the next one, please, right here. So this one is my small world. Um, you know, I always learn something when I write a pattern, and this one was don't write cut. 524 one and a half inch squares on page number one because people pick that pattern up and go and put it put down. It down. Yeah, um, yeah. But this was a quilt that I originally did for Quilt Mania. Um, there's one of their special spring editions and it's just a little, it's heavily inspired of course by Mary Blair, the Disney um, designer. That's so beautiful. I always wanted to do a, a quilt. Yeah. And the last quote we're going to look at today, look at the, again, mm. the love of scraps is just fabulous. So this is Wensleydale, which is on the cover of my book, Quilt Recipes. Oh. Which, yes. So I love that one. It, I knew when I was making that one that it would be the most popular quilt in the book. I just, you know, you get that feeling and it sure has been. So. Well, this is just super inspiring. I love this year's BOM so much. Thank you. And you are 
basically a hand person. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're not going to believe it. When we come back, she's going to show us, Jen, how she hand pieces. It's not like anything you've probably seen before. Did you come up with this yourself? Um, I guess over the years, but I was taught by a very, very wonderful quilter in Australia called Di Ford Hall, and Great. I'm sure wonderful. many of you Great. will will know Di. Great. Well, stick around. You're going to want to see what she does, how she spins this magic. Welcome back. We're here with Jen Kingwell, who is our 2024 BOM designer. Yes. I love this quilt, right? Thank you. Now, we established in the first segment that Jen is a handwork person, what, about 90% or something Probably. like that? Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the show, we're going to mm -hmm. learn the Jen Kingwell way, but don't be sad if you're not a handwork person. You can do this all by machine. Anybody can do this quilt, and everybody's going to want to do this quilt. So let's talk about templates, which can freak out a lot of people. They can. And most people do think of these templates, the acrylic templates, being for machine piecing, because, of course, you can rotary cut them and machine piece them. But we always just offer them as an added extra. I love to hand piece with them. Mm -hmm. But I understand people want to rotary cut. People... You know, it, it, they just open it up so that people can choose whatever method they, they wish to do. make any of my quilts. So then with all your patterns, and we're going to get to what we're working on in a second here, yes. uh, the book comes with the paper patterns, but then you can purchase the extra templates yes. if you want. These are an add-on extra. I don't ever expect anyone have to buy have to. something if they don't want to. So you can just make the quilt with the templates that are featured in the, in the pattern. But once you use them? You'll never go back. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> never go back. Now, let me explain what we're doing here. We're not working specifically with the BOM block, but this is a class that you teach all over the world. Yes. And when you learn this block and the you know innuendos of it, you can do anything, including the BOM, which we'll talk about in a little bit down the road. Okay. Exactly. So let's get mm. to template land. Right. So um, as I said, you can cut these out of the book from paper or template plastic. Mm -hmm. um, I always make the first block out of, you know, my handmade templates. Once I know that it's a block that I want to continue with, we cut the acrylic templates. Now these are just millimeter perfect and so easy to use. Um, <laughs> no, you cut them first and then you go, uh-oh. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no they're, they're nice and easy to use. But the first thing I want to talk about is I love curved piecing. Mm -hmm. I just, I love curves. By hand. Yes, um, but not hard to do on the sewing machine either. Um, but it's important that everyone understands fabric. Okay. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the nature of the stretch of fabric. So if you pick up a piece like this that doesn't have any indicator about where it is, right. and you give it a little stretch, and it's got some give in it, you know that that is the weft. Okay, so selvedges edges would run down the, the side the here. The cross grain. This yeah. is the width of fabric. Mm -hmm. And then of course down your selvedge, edge, no give at all. All right, and then of course on the 45 degree angle, lots you've got lots and lots of give. So hand piecing is a little bit different to machine piecing in that you have control over what you're doing because it's just one thread traveling. So you can ease in or stretch, nice. let things stretch out. But when you are cutting a curve, you need to maximise the amount of stretch that you get on this inner or concave curve. I don't worry about the outer curve like this one. It's only ever on the inner curved surface that I'm ever going to worry about the stretch. Okay, so do you worry about, let's say this one, that now this would be on the bias? Does that bother you? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not for hand piecing because, you know, I. With machine piecing, you have got a thread top and bottom that locks uh -huh. with each stitch. So you have to be really careful about that stretch. But with hand piecing, I've got one little thread traveling. So I've got the ability to be able to ease that stretch in a little bit. 
Well, that's a little bit of freedom right there. It is. Okay. It is. It really makes a difference. I mean, with something like this, you would probably, if you didn't want to capture a particular image on fabric or something like that, you would keep the edges on the straight. But if I was wanting to perhaps centre something in this okay. template, so you I could would fussy cut with this absolutely too. Absolutely yeah. fussy cut through them. The reason they're orange is so I can see through them for fussy cutting, but I can also find them in my <laughs> your studio. <laughs> Exactly. So I just want to talk a little bit about this template that has two inner curves on it. Um, if I was to place this, remember that this is the little bit of give on the width of our fabric. Mm -hmm. So if I was to place this template this way on the fabric and cut it, I would have a little bit of true bias here, but the bottom half of this template is going to fall on my length of grain Which that has give. no give. Yeah. So if I place the template this way, I've still got bias stretch here, but this part, you know, down this section of the template, I've got some give because it's cut on the width of fabric. So I'm going to cut that template in that direction. Okay. All right, so what I do is um, I have, always have a sandpaper board under my fabric which grips and I will just trace around the edge of the template with my little pencil. Now I do use a soft lead in the pencil, so a two. Okay. And then I mark yeah, the little, holes, little in there. holes, which are the quarter inch um, corners. corners. Yeah. Then I just pull my template from side to side and I need to put my glasses on so that I can see and I'm just going to join dot to dot and get my quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm gonna, oh, right. now what about on the curves there? Are you going to worry about it there? Yeah, well what if you just draw with this template, you can see if I do that, that that is not a quarter inch. So how you always get the quarter inch is find, look at the, your pattern and find which template is going to stitch to this one. Okay. And then you're going to have your perfect quarter inch. Never seen that. It's a really mm -hmm. easy way to do it. And you pop the etched line, the quarter inch etched line on your template onto your drawn line and trace and you get a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And this is super important to remember that it's always the corresponding template that is going to work and give you that perfect quarter so inch. So what I would do up to this moment in time is I would have put this on a rotary mat, put it on top and then cut around it but I really, see, you really got to do this. Well, yeah. you know, you can rotary cut these shapes and still come back and draw your quarter inch in because you're just okay. going to put your etched line okay. onto your cut edge. There's no difference. This is just the edge that I will, okay. will cut. So I just then, for a block like this one here. Oh yeah, I let's show the block <laughs> we're working on. That might be nice, right? So this is my halo quilt, which is this quilt that we've got this one here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just making it in a different colourway. But this is the block. And this is the block I teach because everything in here, once you know this, you can stitch any any quilt so you will be able to stitch the, the block of the month. Okay. Um, it has everything in it that you absolutely Perfect. need to know. Okay. Let's take a look down here what's going on. I am impressed with how organised you are. It's <laughs> wonderful. All right. So once I've cut, so what I do when I'm do making a block like this, I will trace at multi-trace. So I won't necessarily just pick out the fabrics for each block, cut them and then stitch them. I will trace each individual template over and over and over again. And then when I've got little piles of all the different fabric, then I start to play with them. And this is when I'm working out the placement of the okay. fabric. And you will show us how you do this yes. down the road. Okay. Yes. There we go. So this would be the next um, layer that we would add and I will show how we do a continuous seam when we get to the stitching gotcha. segment. And oh. then we're going to add in our little curved pieces at the end and we have the block. Okay, is it harder to do a straight line or a curved line? They're both easy as each other. Okay. In fact, I love curves. If you're feeling a little frustrated, it's good to stitch a curve because you can... <laughs> You're the boss. <laughs> whip, it into, whip it into shape. Exactly. All right. Okay. Is there anything we, else we need to know about this? No, that's probably all we need to know about templates. Okay. Um, but just remember when you're using these, a quarter inch seam allowance is a quarter inch, whether you stitch it by hand or stitch it by machine. So you might like to, um, rotary, as I say, rotary cut these, 
do quite a bit of the block on the sewing machine. You might just want to do the curved sections. Oh yeah, you can mix and match. Why absolutely, that? Yeah. absolutely. Now you do have a quilt store. Tell us about that. I do. So I have a store called Amity Textiles. Amity means friendship and I'm really, I think the whole thing about a, a quilt store is the camaraderie that you have with other people. I love it. I've had it since 2005. So mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah. And you have three daughters. Three daughters, two of them work in the store. So um, Abby works in the Jen Kingwell side, which is sort of more the pattern and design side. And um, Meg works in the retail side. Well, the other thing too that I learned about her store, I'd say pre-pandemic, there's like a cafe in there too. Yes. And so people would come and drink coffee, eat lunch. I mean, brilliant. Yeah. Now she is looking for a really good barista, right? I am. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if you're down there and you're good, you need to talk to Jan. <laughs> yeah, the pandemic changed everything, didn't it? So yeah. many things changed with the pandemic. So let's go look mm. at our BOM, which is pick a petal. And you're saying everything that you just talked about there, and you will be showing in the next segment, is applicable for this block. Absolutely. So once you know the technique of how to cut your templates and how to stitch a straight line and a curve, um, you can sew absolutely anything. Now this block would be the most complex box block in the quilt mm -hmm. but it's re reasonably easy to stitch because you're just stitching these three pieces together. You start with that one then? Yes yeah, start okay. with this one stitch this one to that one then this one to this okay. one and you're going to make four of those units and then we'll talk about how to stitch a continuous seam. And that's your little secret thing that yes. nobody knows about. Yeah. Well your yeah. students yeah. know about yes, it. Yes yeah. they do and then um, we'll insert these. So it's not tricky to do mm -hmm. once you know how. Okay. But the rest of them are easy. And for the participants, we have lots of machine piecing. Um, some of the pattern is written actually for machine piecing. So there are lots of different parts in here. So has Jen made you a believer yet for hand piecing? I think I might be crossing that river with you. <laughs> you love it. I do love that. <laughs> so when we come back, this wonder from Down Under is gonna give us more hand piecing tips to really make this journey smooth. Stick around. On the next quilt show, we're visiting two Colorado visionaries who explore nature in very different ways. We have a wood pile on our property. I went out and sat in the wood <laughs> and I did rubbings on the cut ends of the wood and I really studied the ends of the wood and all of a sudden it occurred to me that the tree rings are wise because they have all the data of their whole life in the rings. Meet textile artist and teacher Diana Fox and see how creating round blocks helped her find her artistic voice. Plus, how does Diana add dimension to her quilts? You might be surprised. Then, fiber and mixed media artist Susan Dillon drops by to teach about expressive embroidery. The sneaky little trick is you add felt and that will build you up some height and give you sort of that mossy... And then you hide it with the... Mm -hmm, you hide it with the stitches. Their work is dynamic, dimensional, and downright indelible. See the artistry of Diana Fox and Susan Dillon on the next Quilt Show. Welcome back everyone. We're spending our day with Jen Kingwell, our 2024 BOM champion. All right, we're so excited about that. I wanna say we're doing a lot of hand piecing today and I've had my experience with it in the past, even though I'm a machine quilter. Mm -hmm. I can remember at a quilt retreat once when the power went out, I have all these students, the power's gone all day due to a snowstorm. What did we do? We hand pieced and I hand pieced a block. I hand quilted the block. I even hand uh, bound it. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite things. So so I want people to embrace handwork as well. And you actually say that from a psychologist standpoint, it's not a bad thing to have in your world. Tell us about that. Actually, it's very good. And I know for me, it quietens my brain. Like I can feel 
I feel peaceful when I sit down and pick up my needle and thread. And I had a psychiatrist who used to come and pick up business cards from the shop because she said so often people will think they're perhaps, you know, a little depressed or something like that, where they were lonely, they needed company and that's what the quilt shop offered. Yep. So that was sort of a lovely, a lovely well, thing. Well, I think it's fabulous and I want to encourage people, <clears throat> even if you're a machine person, there are times when I do think even, I mean, I'm a machine person, but there's times when I get frustrated, the tension's not right or whatever, and I just would like to just breathe. And this yeah. is a place to breathe. It is. No rush. No rush. And you can, just because you do one part by hand doesn't mean that you can't do the rest of the block by machine. So I sort of say to people, it's so portable. If you're traveling or on a vacation, you can hand stitch. Sure. And then when you get home, you can put the rest of the quilt together on your sewing machine. And I confirm that with so many people like you guys that have told me that very same thing. It yes. just really makes me feel at peace. So yes. let's piece, right. do some piecing by hand. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of your tips and tricks. So being, a, I'm a hand quilter as well. So I never stitch down my quarter inch seam allowance. I only ever, when I mark those little registration holes um, with my template, which you might be able to see just there. There's the little dot. Right. Now I have to um, confess that I don't always mark the draw the line. After 30 something years, I can stitch a really Straight, accurate okay. quarter inch seam allowance. But you might recommend the novice mm, I do. to do that. I recommend that they draw, and I showed in the last segment how you draw dot to dot. Sure. But if you think about how you're going to piece this block together, you can see that if you always stitch with this triangle on top when you're making this block, you don't need to draw your quarter inch on the back of, of the course, square yeah. because if you have your cut edges, because they're so accurate, if you have your cut edges together, you're going to have a perfect quarter inch on the back. So I just would recommend that they drew that one line on that surface of the triangle. And then of course, when we're going to add the next layer in, if they draw it on the piece that goes to the front there, they don't need to draw this one or this ah, one. See, so yeah. it saves see, yeah. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. sure. So okay. You have to think about it a little bit. You do. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get with that exactly, concept. Exactly, exactly. So when I start stitching, I do a continuous seam. And I think this is how I get really, really nice points. And um, I don't get any little gap when I stop and stop and start at a corner. So I'm going to start stitching just a little ways in from the corner and I'm going to stitch all the way around this block. And the reason um, I do that is it's quicker because I'm not tying a knot at each end. I'm not trying to find my scissors. I can just whiz all the okay. way around. All right. And I'm going to start, I do a tailor's knot. So first of all, I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in there to hold it and I do pin and match those registration points. And I'll pop a pin in the center there too. Okay, and if you don't have the registration mark on the back, then you just, you line the fabric up. You do. At, at the, where it's been cut and make sure that it's aligned so that you can then pin properly. Funnily enough, I always just put that little dot through the little hole in the template on the corner because then it does give me the perfect alignment when I first start. Okay. All right, and I'm going to start a little way in. As I said, I'm not going to start right on the point and I'm going to do what is called a tailor's knot. So I take a little bite of the fabric and I pull my thread through. There's and no I knot leave in the thread? No knot in the thread at all. And I leave roughly a quarter or so inch tail. I'm going to do a back stitch, so a second little stitch, and pull my needle and thread through. Now this thread that is already committed here in the fabric just sits there. So when I take a second back stitch, my needle is going to pop out either one side of that thread or the other. Mm -hmm. And if you just note which side of the needle that thread sits, you pick the thread in the eye of the needle up bring it to the same side as that thread and under the tip of your needle. I get it. So that when you do that, you have a thread on each side and your needle sits in I the centre that. of that mm -hmm. loop, all right? So when I pull that through, it will form a little figure eight. You will see that form and tie down tight that is fabulous. onto the surface. Now this little knot is so secure. If you ever have to unpick, you will never ever get that up. <laughs> You'll actually have to clip it. It's such a good let's little Let's don't look. do that then, yes, all right? Let's, that's just, exactly let's right. just keep sewing. No always. mistakes. And then I'm just going to continue stitching. And it is just a running stitch. That's all we are doing is a running stitch. 
but every time I pull my needle and thread through and I start the next run, I'm just going to start with a little back stitch. Oh, now that's really good. Is that uh, yeah. just secures everything it does. a bit? It gives it a little security. Um, and if you just get into the habit of doing that every time you start this next run, and about You're how many stitches do you get at a time? Five or do you six? Know, I or? probably do five, six or seven, but I don't think it matters. Everybody has a slightly different rhythm. And if you do two or three, that's okay. Can it we talk about matter. the needle? Because it's a tad longer than I would have yeah. might have thought. Because so, I'm usually getting my between. Right. And I that's this tiny. is not a between? No, this is a milliner's or okay. a straw. Mm -hmm. um, and I use a size 11, so a nice fine needle. But I think needles are very personal preference. I just say point at one end, hole at the other, and what happens in between is what you like to hold. Now, don't be mad at me, but I'm noticing that it's slightly bent. Oh, yes. And, and I mean, I would go, oh my gosh, the, no. the needle's bent, so I no. need to toss it. What's you know the what? deal? It's just where you hold it in your fingers. And it's, like it so. still works, it's okay. It still works, okay. yes. All my needles have a little bend in them. And then I just continue to stitch up to the registration mark at the quarter inch seam allowance. Now, as I said, I never stitch that last quarter inch down. I'm only ever stitching to the registration point all the time because if um, I'm, a, as I said, a hand quilter, I oh. want to be able to um, Turn, manipulate. press the seams okay, whichever way. Exactly. When I get to that registration mark, I'm going to take a back stitch. I'll just take that pin out. Now, so I'll do that pin was stitch. there the whole time. Do you normally leave it there or was no, you just kind of like, I, oh, I just kind of forgot to take it out? I just forgot okay, to okay. take it out. Huh. <laughs> All right. And so now I'm ready to add the next piece in to do the continuous seam. So I'm just going to pass the tip of my needle through to the front of my work a little bit there, pick up the next one, and I'm actually going to feed that registration mark onto my needle. Oh, wow. Like so. Okay. And once that's aligned... Yes. That seam is now out of your way That's exactly and you're only right. having two layers again. At the back. So now I'm onto this surface and I'm going to do a little back stitch there. And then I will pin the rest of that seam allowance now. All right. And then I'll continue stitching. Okay. And now I treat all four corners the same. So which means that I'm going to get a nice junction at all of those four points where I find sometimes when I stop and start at a point, I might get a little gap. So I will just open that up so that you can see by feeding those two that pieces together, fabulous. you get that perfect, perfect that is a That's fabulous. Now you've got that already done on the next step out. I do. Thank you for, for all the hard work to get prepared today. It was It's just a lot of really well organized uh, step outs. So here, we're ready to do the next bit, we are. right? So I've already sewn all the way around here as a continuous seam, and now I can add these next pieces in, and I can do them as a continuous seam, once again starting not right at the point so that I can go all the way around, but we just have this little seam allowance here at the okay, back so that we need that? to deal with. Because that's the next little trick you know, it's, it's the bumps in the road that you have to solve along the way. The, uh, the home stretch is not the problem, right? It's, That's true. It's and look, if you, if you know these sort of little tips and tricks, it just makes um, hand stitching that much more fun. I'll just get a new needle and thread. Okie doke. This needle will have a little bend in it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So I'm always taking this seam allowance out of the way. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to stitch from right to left. So I'm going to just swing that seam allowance out of the way at the back, just so that I don't catch it. And I will just pop one little pin in there. And does that help hold the seam? Just to hold out of the it way? out of the way at the back. Okay. All right. Now, of course, if you were left-handed, you'd be stitching the other way. I'm going to start here. I'm going Alex to do... is a lefty, by the way. Yes, I picked that up before. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the tailor's knot again. Whoops, I'll take that pin out so it doesn't get in the way. All right, so that's really good. So you've done the starting the same way as you did starting before. The same wrapped way. it around, start on the same side so, that it came yep, out. That's exactly right. And then I'm just going to stitch over. And I'm going to stitch right up 
What I'm wanting to do is stitch right to where this seam that comes up here finishes so that okay. there's that quarter inch mark there at the back. And so what I'm trying to do is stitch over to that very point. Now I'm going to do a little back stitch there just to secure that point down. And now all I'm going to do at the back is just literally swing that seam allowance over to the other side. Oh. It is so, so simple. Once I've done that, I will do a little stitch and a back stitch here just to secure that down. So now and that seam that was going. on the other side is just like just swinging in the breeze That's back exactly there. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's just completely free and swinging so that when it comes time to press this um, block, I can press this seam allowance in any, any direction. direction that I want to that's press it. That's fabulous. And I'm right. just going to continue around And that's going to go there. all the way around, it right? Is. Now we've got some curves that we, do. we need to do today. So let's move to the curves. And you've got two of them on each corner. Yes, so what I've done is I have stitched some of these so that you can see and I would just stitch this one in. I just literally mark the halfway marks and pin them um, and I would stitch that. But I was just going to do this one because okay. this has that little seam there. So I'll pin mark this one just in half. You can just finger press it or pop a little pin mark in there. Now, <clears throat> I always like to stitch with this inner curve, the concave curve facing me, and I'll show you exactly why when I pin these two together. Match my center. Okay, I'm gonna just tell everybody, rewind and watch how she flipped that over and turned it around, okay? Because you're gonna wanna see that, because now you're in the right position, the right orientation. And I'm going to then just pin my ends. Okay. Now, if I dots. was, if you um, have a, a little look, when I go to match these cut edges, that inner curve wants to fall down. Mm -hmm. So if I'm stitching with this surface facing me, this one, I can't see that 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 uh, one at the back down. is it slid sliding down. down. Yep, yep, yep. So that's why I like to turn it around and have this one facing towards me so that I can see exactly how to how to stitch. And all I'm going to do is just match those edges and apply a little bit of tension to those cut surfaces and pop a couple of pins in to hold it. And then we're just going to start once again stitching here with our tailor's knot and stitch the curve, just making sure that our edges now, are together. Now, in this particular case, are you going to do your tailor's knot right in the dot? I'm going to do the, it right at the dot because I'm because just Because you're stitching. not doing a continuous not, all the way exactly. around, you're just doing the curve. The okay. only time that I start a little ways in is if I'm going to stop right back where I started, I think it's but fabulous. on this one. You're pretty fast at this, right? I am. I'm going to give a little nod to Jenny Beyer because yes. Jenny was one of our TQS legends and know what she told me? She said, Ricky, uh, I could, I bet I could hand piece a quilt as fast as you can machine piece it. Now, I don't, we never went to that challenge, yes. but once you get into it, the whole process goes faster than most people think. Exactly. It really does. And not only is it fast when you're actually doing it, but you can stitch it anywhere. Like a lot of places, you don't have your sewing machine with you. Like sure, absolutely. I'm yeah, traveling or well, I'm hotel on a room. 17 or, hour yeah. flight from Melbourne to. Well, know, and oftentimes, here. I mean, uh, sorry, I'm just chatting, but. You know, you, you're sitting there and you're like, I want to be with the family or my husband. We want to do something in the family room. And now I'm over in the studio completely separated. This can yes. also bring you together in the same environment where you can be doing that and be with family. Absolutely. So there's a lot of wonderful reasons to do it. Now, yeah. you're not done with this because you've got a way to do embroidery on these quilts while it's being quilted, yes. right? Yes. This is really exciting. And we're going to share that when we come back, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Well, now we're to the cherry on top, the quilting, the embroidery, and all that stuff that just really, I think, sets your quilts apart, yes, right? The, the pizza love. Now, before you do a demo for us, I want to take a look at what's going on here because you love embroidery as much as I love embroidery. So let's start here. Did you do this before you basted it or after, or what's the deal? So that 
that piece there I did before the quilt was put together. So that would have been embroidered onto the log cabin blocks. Okay, but then you then this would be your little quilting around it, right? Yes. So I've outlined quilted. Okay. And then just to sort of depict it a little. Do you ever embroider all the way through? I thought I heard that earlier in the show. Yes, I do. So some of these things are, um, the embroidery is the actual quilting, wow. and some of it is embroidery. And it's just whatever, right? Yes, yes. Okay, but now here's our little, gosh, I hope we can see this well here. The little simple running stitch, and then there's some in here that are really, really, very, very subtle. So you've got, hi, and then you have, shh, right? Yes. But it's not all just running stitch. Let's, let's go down here. What about that? They're little crosses and that is um, quilting. So part of that cross goes all through the three layers to hold it together. So I love to use, as well as the running stitch, I will do little crosses, little diamonds, little squares, and they're all sort of just hidden in there somewhere. Okay. Why do you do that? Why do you add these different components rather than just the quilting, right? But, uh, I just think it adds texture and visual interest and I would love to be able to embroider like Sue Spargo but um, I'm not that clever so this is sort of my very simple version of... Does she love it? I think she would like me to be able to perfect a bit more, oh. a, a little more, a little more. Oh, I think you're perfect, okay? So let's, you're going to actually demo some of these uh, stitches. Yes. Let's have the sample over here, okay? And you've prepared this. Okay, this was not in the original plan for this segment, but this was brought out here and it's, I go, what is going on here? It's those little plastic things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like going, I didn't know you were supposed to do this. Now I wanna say this, I wouldn't do this on a machine, I don't think. I think I do it for handwork. Yes, although I think your machine would just scoot over the top of them. I don't think they would hurt your machine needle at all. I think they'd probably just slip to one side really? or the other. And I, I wish at home you could appreciate, let me see. That I'm pushing way up underneath, so that's how little it is. Mm. The ones I've always seen have been kind of big and clunky. Mm. No, they're very tiny. 3.4 millimeter. I'm not sure what that is in Imperial, but you might be able to see if we put that. Can you see like how small it is right how here? How small it is. Yeah, they're the tags. Okay, well, it's said on the package too, like super small or something yes. like that. All right. Yes. So how do, you, how do you base this thing then? Look, I always learn from other people, which we, we, all, all, do. we all do. Um, so when I was first trying to do this, because you have to get this through, um, that little needle has to go through all three layers because the little tag pops out the side. Okay. So um, I was trying to sort of get my hand underneath my no. quilts and it was yeah. very difficult. And then the gorgeous Stevie Graves told me about popping a marble, which I don't have, but we have improvised today. So you pop that underneath your backing fabric when you are layering your quilt so up right there, right? and so yeah. it makes that little a little tent in uh -huh. your quilt and because it's shiny you can just slip that wherever you want it um, and you just push it then you just hold it and with the gun you just pop it down in that little tent that it makes just down at the side like that oh, and then the just side. fire the tag not on the top off. no in where it where it sort of creates a little gap okay, between the marble. I'm going to bring this guy over here. Okay. okay. So there. So where the little tent is, you just run that down the side of the marble and it will just fire the... I need oh. this. I need Sorry. this. I need this. I need yeah. this. I need this. <laughs> and I want to mention that Stevie passed away recently and she was a, a huge loss to our she quilting was. community. She was. So, okay, what are you going to stitch for me, friend? Right. Well, I thought I'd start with just a running stitch. I love 12 weight thread. Mm -hmm. I think it gives a really nice bold stitch. And I just use a chenille 26 needle mm -hmm. with it. And is this um, Wonderfill, mm -hmm. isn't it? Probably? Orifil. Or, or, okay, okay. 12 weight. That's 12 the important weight. thing. The, yeah. the important thing is 12 weight. Okay. All right. And so I have just tied a very simple knot in the end of my thread. You can see there just a small knot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just pull, pull that knot in between the layers so that mm -hmm. it, I haven't gone through to my backing fabric. And then I'm just going to pull it through. Okay. So 
you're not on a frame, you're not on a hoop. This no. is kind of against my religion. I know. Um, I lap quilt because okay. I just, I get frustrated with a hoop and so I've taught myself. So I just sit with the quilt in my lap. Look, I think a hoop definitely gives you better tension, but for me, it's all about the enjoyment and I don't enjoy using a hoop. And so. you know what? This is what we've learned on the show. We've had so many different people come on and um, it's just what works for you and what's so great here at the quilt show is that you can, it's an hors d'oeuvre tray of options. Yes, you know? exactly. Okay, let's do one. All right, and I'm just going to now quilt um, towards myself. So I use the heel of my hand to hold the quilt because I don't have the frame to hold it. What's the heel of your hand? So this part okay. here, so I just tuck the quilt in between my thumb and my finger and then I'm just going to do a running stitch and I always quilt towards myself because I'm just I find that that is the most comfortable position for me. I know people quilt in many different directions, but for me, the ergonomics of quilting towards myself works mm -hmm. and I can quilt for hours and not get sore. Like you're in a chair or something like yes, that, right? Yes, just okay. sitting in a chair. And so that's the running stitch is very, very, very simple. Um, most of you will know how to do that. Well, I think the, t uh, the ticket is to get it as even as you can. Yeah, that's exactly right. The gap in the stitch is even, but then we could do a little cross. So if this was the top left hand side of the cross, I would bring my thread over and then I would put my needle in where the bottom right hand side of the cross is. And this is a stitch that goes through all three layers that is going to be basically your quilting stitch to tack your layers together. And that went through all three also. Yes, yeah. yes. And then I'll just oh, so form the rest of the cross and then travel in my um, batting to where I wish to do Look at that. the next cross. And so you would just continue. Now this, you can quilt a quilt very quickly with these crosses. What about the little square things I spied somewhere? Yes. Then I will just straighten that out a little bit so that we can Got see. It. So you can do any stitch you like, just so long as you're not making um, a, a little mess on the back of your quilt, <laughs> okay? Because you don't want all those sort of crissy crossy things oh, right. happening on the back. So a, a lot of these stitches, you're going to travel in your batting. So I would make this top bar of the cross and I would travel in my batting and bring it down. Then I would repeat that that stitch. So to, you're being very mindful that you're not going all the way through. That's exactly yeah. right. And then you will just put one of these bars that will go through all three layers, all right? As one of the quilting As stitches. As one of the okay. quilting stitches to tack it down. I guess these stitches are a little bit like it, they would be if you tied a quilt where you're just getting that stitch every now and then mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. through to the back. But that's enough for you to be able to and this is real fine batting. I love, that's Quilter's Dream. That's what I thought, um, yeah. Cotton Request, Lovely. which is what I love. Love it. So I just want to say this one more time because it, ding, the light bulb's going on. You go through the batting when you travel, otherwise the orange might show. Yes, and if you had a really pastel fabric, you might need to consider the colour thread that you're okay. going to use because you don't want that shadow. But if you try and get that thread, that needle to go through the centre of the batting, you don't see too much of that shadow at all. And you know when you're going through it, right? You can feel it. Yeah. You can. Well, I have to tell you, this quilt is a treasure and it's scrappy and it's wonderful and it's joyful and it has embroidery, which I love. <laughs> and I know you will want to get started with it. But Jen has a book here. This is her latest one. It's a combination of her love of quilting and baking. Okay. <laughs> oh no, oh no. I am holding this <laughs> book. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so quilt recipes and you guys, it is it's fabulous. The, I mean, not only is the photography, because we love eye candy, right? But all the patterns. But then we get back food. to the back and there's food. Now there's something real important I wanna make sure you mention about this book. This book is very, very special. 
It is. I'm so proud of this book because my daughter Abby, myself and Philippa, our graphic designer, we were the three people, that, only three people that worked on it. So all the styling um, I made and every stitch and every quilt I've done, I baked all the recipes. The girls did the photography and the styling. And where was it printed? So, and it was printed 30 minutes from my home. In so, Australia. In Australia. Right. So you, you kept it at home, yes. kept the business at home. I think that's fabulous. All right. Okay, Jen, we need to know where to find your book and also everything for the BOM. Right. So the book and patterns and things, local quilt stores, um, but you have everything you need for the block of the month, the patterns and the templates at the quilt show, and you also have the book and templates as well. Um, of course, you can get it from my store, Amity Textiles. Um, and you have a social media I do. presence. I do. I'm Jen Kingwell on Instagram and Facebook, and the store is Amity Textiles on social Yay. media that's fabulous oh my gosh what this, a this wonderful show. wonderful Ooh, yeah it's you know? really inspiring and you know i mean i am a machine person but i always get inspired to do this and like i said earlier you know you, there's no, there's going to be a chance when you might need to have to get in there by exactly. hand and it's going to be great well we love you being here we love mm -hmm. that you agreed to to do this Thank it's you. very special very it's different yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed watching jen today and learning a few things and tips and tricks and as always remember it's a new day, but today it's a good day. Every, Every day. day.